Welcome back. You're watching Street Sweep at a quarter to the hour. We are on that final home straight when it comes to those US indexes. So let's get a check in on how we are faring on that home straight. And it is certainly a mixed bag we're seeing here. The Dow Jones moving up into positive territory just fractionally, though, only by around about seven points. As you can see, also the S&P 500 in the red. So it is a mixed bag. And when it comes to the Nasdaq, we're also seeing that slipping just into positive territory. Uh, this coming through, we've had gains in Caterpillar, the best gainer on the Dow Jones. We're also seeing shares in Apple, the tech titan, hitting a record high off the back of Barron, saying that the stock could jump a further 10% in the coming six months. Meanwhile, the US dollar index back in the black. This is certainly rebounding off that weakness that we did see in the wake of that G20 meeting, returning into positive territory. Well, meanwhile, getting a check in on the oil space and oil remaining under pressure. This despite news that OPEC may extend its six-month production deal. While the cartel won't decide until May whether to prolong the cuts, energy ministers are holding talks this weekend in Kuwait to discuss the deal's progress. However, growing U.S. oil output and persistently high inventories weighed on prices, with the latest drilling data showing a rise in the rig count for a ninth straight week. Well, joining us now is Tim Evans from Longleaf Trading Group, live from the CME in Chicago. Tim, hello to you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, certainly, it is a tale of two cities when it comes to that oil price action. Be with you today. Yeah, I mean, crude oil, uh, you know, it, it's shaping up uh, where we saw. But basically, to back up a little bit, I mean, what we saw was a huge position in the market. I mean, we had a, a position over a billion barrels of crude oil. Um, you know, ultimately, as you know, it became clear that the, you know, the goal of the OPEC uh, production cut deal, you know, wasn't materializing in the market. You know, you know the market got a bit nervous and we shedded, uh, according to the COT report that came out a week of Friday ago, uh, the, the market shed 153 million barrels of crude oil. You know, to put that into perspective, that's two full days of global demand in crude oil. So, you know, it's, uh, it's been an interesting ride here in crude oil over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, in my view, it's going to get more interesting here over the next month as well. Now, another of the key developments has been comments coming through from the Saudi oil minister discussing uh, extending the cuts by a further six months. But this, Tim, not really providing the support that one would perhaps expect within the market. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, last week when uh, those comments were made, you know, we got a little bit of pop in, in crude oil, but effectively the market just yawned and, and shook it off. And uh, we gave back those those early gains we got following that comment pretty quickly. You know, my, my you know, my opinion on this, and it's been really this way when they were even looking at putting this deal, deal forward the first time, you know, they have to coalesce a large group of people with competing interests to move forward to accomplish a, a common goal. Uh, you know, fortunately for OPEC they, were, OPEC, they were able to do that the first time around. You know, what is the likelihood that they're going to be able to coalesce that same group of people, uh, you know, to continue to move forward with the deal that is shown not to uh, produce ultimately what they were hoping it would? You know, so, I, you know, I think we're going to need to see a lot more uh, comments from other oil ministers uh, for the market to have some faith that OPEC will even have the ability uh, to move forward with an extension of that deal for another six months. So we do have, as flagged, Tim, this dual story when it comes to OPEC production cuts, also U.S. inventories. There does seem to be some consensus within the market that we will see a level of drop-off in inventories in the second half. Um, to your mind, will this encourage some investors to hold their positions for the time being, or are we already seeing signs of repositioning moving ahead? Yeah, I mean, there's a, you know, that's a, 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 that's a popular opinion, you know, that, you know, ultimately we are going to see uh, some rationing and, and some uh, global balancing in crude oil. I personally don't share that view. I mean, I've, I've looked at these numbers 20, 30 different times, and, you know, my calculator doesn't point to, you know, the market finding balance over that six months period. But, um, you know, I think based on where we are, you know, in terms of a risk-adjusted position, you know, if, in fact, the market does tighten, over that next six month period, then crude oil definitely provides a, you know, a, a relatively good investment opportunity.
Now, Tim, I wanted to turn our focus uh, away slightly from the oil space, but to another commodity sector, in fact, the soft commodities. Uh, I know you've been keeping a close eye on the grains market at, mo at the moment, particularly soybeans. But from a technical perspective when it comes to this product, we're seeing somewhat of a bearish downward trend when it comes to soybeans, aren't we? Yeah, you know, what's interesting is the, the technical component of the soybean trade looks very similar to the technical component of the crude oil trade. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, the statistics I talked about early just a moment ago, you know, there was a very large, long position in the market that built through the winter, you know, as we were seeing big demand numbers for U.S. grain, you know, China being uh, the, the primary importer of, of U.S. soybeans, you know, as the kind of the crop came to harvest, you know, what we found is we have a we had a record crop, record yield uh, and almost record acreage. You know, so we uh, filled all corn silos with soybeans and and now we need additional demand to ration, you know, the supplies. And we're entering a period where uh, the South America, primarily Brazil, is now harvesting soybeans as well. So we have a bumper crop and we're about to add another huge crop on top of that. So what we saw from the technical side of the market is that long position, it got shaved. Last week, we saw 30,000 contracts come off that long position. There's still about 100,000 100, contracts open. You know, so while we're looking at some pretty bearish fundamentals in the market, that's still on a relative basis a pretty sizable long position. So just like crude oil, you know, that can leave the market very susceptible to selling you know, if the market, you know, doesn't begin to feel, you know, that ultimately the market's going to stabilize and possibly move higher. So very similar circumstances there. And with that in mind, uh, also corn, we're seeing again, echoing some of that trend that is coming through in soybeans. Yeah, I mean, the, the market fundamentals are similar to what we're, you know, what we're seeing in soybeans. Uh, you know, a lot of corn comes out of Argentina and Brazil. Um, Safrino, which is an analyst group out of Brazil, just raised their estimates from 91.5 million tons to 96 million or 98 million tons, rather. So an increase of 6.5 million tons. That's a lot of corn, you know. So the market really needs to find buyers for that corn. Uh, you know, the issue is is the dollar uh, has been a problem for for U.S. producers. You know, it being as strong as it's been here, you know, over the last couple of months. You know, it pulling back here is is relatively helpful, but still on a comparative basis to the Brazilian Real, the dollar's pretty strong. So, you know, I think for corn uh, demand uh, to pick up for U.S. producers, you know, the dollar is going to need to continue to move lower or, you know, there's going to need to be some additional aggressive buying. I, th I think the only candidate for that is China. And there's really no evidence of that on the on the near term horizon. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for more downside action in both soybeans and corn here over the next month. Tim Evans, many thanks for the update. We will leave it there.